Hey, so uh, this video is to specifically address the beef that I have with Steven Johnson um, and to clarify that uh, kind of the emotional turmoil I'm going through personally right now, um, he's not the root or the cause of it. Um, he's kind of the tip of the iceberg, the latest asshole. But um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's really nothing. But I feel like I need to address a few things because uh, specifically towards... Um, the people at Falcon Head. Um, so here we go. So realize um, the cannabis industry and medical marijuana is uh, my passion. It's, it's been something that I've been passionate about for over 10 years. I've worked in the industry from Colorado up to Montana. I came down to Oklahoma to get into the industry and make a career out of it. On January 1st, I launched this idea of Cannabis Chronicles to use it as a stepping stone to be able to get into the industry here in Oklahoma kind of in my own way, my own fashion, kind of open door, see what would happen. Steven reached out to me the same day. I asked what I was up to, I told him, he was like, great, that's awesome, that's what I hope to hear. Um, <clears throat> you don't know this about me, but then he starts telling me about his previous uh, financial background and career. Uh, and says he's got this private equity firm in his back pocket and that they're just dying to get into the cannabis industry. And uh, looking at starting here in Oklahoma and possibly moving to other states once this uh, building, you know, once we get the model established. So we start talking over the next few months or a few weeks. And then in uh, um, early uh, February, we actually meet at this place in the deal, 160,000 square foot uh, facility that we're looking about doing an indoor grow in. It's a dream come true for me. Um, so I'm helping him get uh, grow models and business models. He ends up in um, Michigan. Now I'm going to talk about two girlfriends. There's a Michigan girlfriend. There's a wealthy girlfriend. I realize at this moment, I think, the woman I'm talking to in Michigan is the wealthy girlfriend. And in lieu of going too much into Steven's personal history, he was going through his second divorce. And while separated with her, he met this wealthy girlfriend. They uh, proceed to fly all over the world. Uh, they scuba dive in all these fancy in all these amazing locations. Dream come true. She's sugar mama. He's living with her in a fancy house um, on a fancy lake in Texas. I'll just put it there. So he ends up in Michigan around March. And I'm talking to the Michigan girlfriend. And we're building we're building the business model and working together and having conference calls with vendors and establishing, you know, making all this stuff happen and getting all this together. And I'm excited. Things are rolling around. And then Steven gets kind of aloof around May. Um, kind of don't know where he's at. Don't really have much communication, but I'm just waiting because I've done all my work. I'm just waiting for the lawyers and all the business crap to get done and the money to get thrown out so that way I can get the money for the effort I already started and start this lucrative career in, in the industry. So, um, Steven around June gets back in touch with me and, um, uh, he's down in Oklahoma. Um, he went to New Mexico for a while to visit his family, but he bought this place at Falconhead. I meet with him in June to go visit this place. And he's like, man, he's talking about wanting to invest into this place and selling me the, on the idea. And so we start researching the history. I actually moved there in July because we're supposed to about to start this operation on a deal. He's telling me we're just two weeks away, man. And you know, any second makes sense right now at this point realize the Michigan girlfriend reaches out to me because Stephen had been living her and her two younger daughters and making all these grandiose plans and promises he bought this RV uh, with the hopes of fixing it up together and screw COVID we're gonna travel over the summer but then he ghosted him no word no nothing ghosted him so she's reaching out to me just concerned um, of course, I let Stephen know, and of course, I'd, I'd let her know. You know I'd, I don't go into too much information with her, but at this point, of course, I'm getting concerned myself. I'm like, okay, I'm confused. What's going on? And that's when I realized there's the different girlfriend, the wealthy girlfriend, who I thought was the girl up in Michigan. I thought they were just up there to get, you know, why not? So that this all starts to unfold. I'm living at Falcon Head. And realize Stephen has one foot out the door with the wealthy girlfriend. And I think I'm being a Christian brother by counseling him, supporting him. 
And of course, you know, I've been doing nothing but helping him with his cannabis product. Then more to the story starts to evolve. I realized the wealthy girlfriend and Steven had previous issues. I meet the wealthy girlfriend. I learn her story and get to know her. I actually get invited to her home, meet her family. I confronted Steven several times. The first time I confronted Steven about what's going on with the cannabis industry, dude, I can't keep living like this at Falconhead, was after being there for about six weeks. We had a heart to heart. He got reinvigorated, motivated. I'm going to make this happen, John. I guarantee this is going to happen. And I realized, yeah, he's helping me out financially a little bit. Um, he's not paying my bills. He's just helping me with gas and food. And yeah, I'm crashing at his RV now. But nothing in this RV works about the electricity. And realize we didn't have electricity at his place for two months. I was getting power from our neighbor. And so I'm there for two months hanging out. I'm living there. Steven is showing up, helping for a couple hours do remodel to his, you know, his home. I would do the majority of the work. Now realize I'm only supposed to be doing this for two weeks. I think he realized what an asset he had construction wise in me because for two months I'm doing hardcore manual labor for the dude. <laughs> and now realize this isn't agreed upon, but you know, you know, we get into it. And I'm like, dude, you're going to owe me a lot more money than you think. Like, this, this, <laughs> you're giving me scraps, bro, and I can't live off of $15 a day. So I'm getting more and more in debt. Things are getting more and more in disarray, and I'm starting to, and, and, and I'm starting to realize this web of lies and manipulation that Stephen has with the wealthy girlfriend. And I start to realize how he's basically lying to her, using me to keep her going and keep her enticed and happy. But still, while he's lying to her and to me, playing both sides, now he's running for the board of Falcon Head, making all these grandiose promises, and it's more of a it's more of a popularity thing for him, because Stephen is going through so much emotional stuff himself that he needs this because everything else in his life has fallen apart. And I was trying to cancel and be a brother to him. But then he wants to twist it on me. And I realized, yeah, well, I've been at Falcon. I've been there four months. And after a couple months, and I went out to him, I was like, dude, my depression levels are at full max. I can't live like this anymore. We got to make something happen. And I'm getting to know everybody, and I'm having fun camaraderie. And there was one night, pool tournament was going on. The pool, one of the pool tables is kind of busted. We're all messing with it. Everybody's about to break it. And I just myself, because if you know me, you know how I am. I walk in, I'm like, screw it guys, I'll do this. I tell the bartender, I'm like, I take full responsibility for this. You know, it's, I break the thing open. I realize it's already half broke, um, needed to be already fixed, had chunk missing out of it. Long story short, it wasn't my problem to solve, but I did. And I got banned for 30 days. Towards the end of my 30 day ban, because um, Steven didn't know when my ban was up. Um, the bartenders didn't, nobody knew when my ban was up. About 28, and, and so what would have been 30 days past the incident, day of the incident, I stopped by on my way home. I stopped by the lounge because it's on the way to the RV. I stopped by because the security officer, the security guy's truck is there. He's the current bar manager. He obviously is going to be the guy that knows when my ban is up. So I go in. I'm saying hi to people. Everybody's like, hey, is your band over? I don't know. I'm here to find that out. I see Buck. Apparently the band's not over. I got two more days. So I say, sorry, all good. I turn around, I leave. I don't order a beverage. I don't hang out for a long time. He didn't have to kick me out. I left on my own accord. I went home. The next day, apparently, Buck called Steven, and Steven threw this in my face, and he's drawing at straws. He's making these big grandiose things about how I can't be trusted. I'm this big troublemaker and a loose cannon. Well, the loose cannon part's right because I've been pissed off for several weeks now because I've called him out on his bullshit and he's been a complete asshole to me. Without going into much detail, the point being is this is a man that you cannot trust. He will use the words brotherhood care and love to pull you in 
all the while he's turning in his brain how to keep you enticed because he's using you until he can get what he needs out of you. So the connections, the people he met, everything that, you know, he got everything he needed out of me and proceeded to ghost me. But that ended up being him having to kick me off his property, which in hindsight, I could have stayed and I could have fought it, but why? Steven Johnson, I think, is trying to get developers to get involved in a Falconhead 2. I think he wants to take over. I think he got pissed off and his feelings hurt, and he's blaming me for not getting voted on for the board. Forget the fact that he doesn't even live there. The fact that he hasn't been an owner for less than four months, he's running for the board. So it's a popularity thing for him because he's got nowhere else to go. And as his world's falling apart around him, of course, it's affecting mine because now all these dreams and these hopes and this stuff that I've been building all year long, gone. All the time, effort, work. Steven Johnson's probably thrown my way when it comes to it about two grand, 2,500 in cash, you know? Um, he owes me a lot more than that. <laughs> A lot more than that um, not just for what I already put into this canvas project um, and forget about what the promises he made and of course the money that I missed out for not working in another project this entire fucking year <laughs> but uh, more importantly the construction work I did and here's the thing you know he's twisting it at Falcon Ed and spreading all these rumors and crap lies about me yeah whatever dude <sighs> You know, the biggest problem here is Steven's really lucky that I have not slapped him so hard to knock his head off. And he knows it. I have two assault charges on my record throughout my life. Misdemeanors, stupid, drunken, bar fight altercations. But one more, and that's felony. <laughs> so when, when people like Steven Johnson come at me the way that he has recently... I find it very difficult to not slap him in the face and get myself in trouble. And so I had to do everything I could to not get in trouble. Anyways, that's my beef with Steven Johnson. Take it or leave it for whatever you want. Um, he's a con artist. I would not trust him. Um, I certainly would not trust him around my children uh, because he uses children and his influence with children. Like the dynamic that he's created with the wealthy girlfriend is so disgustingly, disturbingly sick. Because the grandkids adore him. But everybody else knows him for the full of shit creep that he is. It's, it's, he's. And the wealthy girlfriend, oh wow, he owes her a lot more than he owes me. And the girlfriend in Michigan, I mean, he owes her a lot more than just money. Uh, a, sin, a sincere, heartfelt apology. Um, you gotta make amends, bro. Um, if you're throwing in my face, I don't take responsibility for my actions. I do, man. I took the 30-day ban. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got charged for it. Huh. Do I feel guilty? No. Not at all. Good luck with that, bro. Um, yeah, personally, am I going to be able to see a dime out of Steven? Yes, I do plan on taking him to civil court, but I don't know. At this point, there's a lot more things going on in my life that <sighs> fuck him. So take this, leave it. That's my beef with Steve Johnson.